Hello and welcome to Motors for the Masses and what is a 48 hour test drive review on a vehicle that goes against everything I stand for. And I'm rather scared that I'm gonna like it. So let's roll the intro and get cracking. Now I could stand here all day and rave about what Mustangs really are and drool about my 1971 Mac 1 7 litre V8 or my old 2006 4.6 litre V8 Mustang. But instead, I'm going to talk to you about the fully electric Mustang mach -E. I'll be all right, I'll be all right. Oh, I need a drink. Oh. Right off the bat, let's talk about the looks. It's that sort of crossover SUV type look with a sort of Infiniti QX55 front end and Mustang GT meets Peugeot 3008 back end. Now, as far as I'm concerned, they should never call it the Mustang. It's a Ford Fusion. I mean, that kind of works, doesn't it? Fusion, electric, it goes. However, there is a reason why they went with the name Mustang, and I'll talk about that more when I'm inside the car. In the UK, there are four different models available. The Select, with a range of 202 to 273 miles, 269 brake horsepower, and 317 pounds-foot of torque. The premium rear-wheel drive version with a range of 293 to 372 miles, 294 brake horsepower and 427 pounds-foot of torque. This model, which is the premium all-wheel drive version with a range of 277 to 341 miles, 351 brake horsepower and, like the rear-wheel drive, 427 pounds-foot of torque. Seems a bit weird. And the top GT version with a range of 244 to 304 miles, not as much, but it does have 487 brake horsepower and 634 pounds foot of torque. Now, in terms of usable battery power, the base select model has 71 kilowatt hours, whereas the other three in the range have 91 kilowatt hours. In terms of speed, the lower three models have a top speed of 111 miles an hour. Doesn't seem that much, does it? However, the GT version has a top speed of 124 miles an hour. However, what's the zero to 62 time? Oddly, the base model is just a tiny bit quicker than the rear wheel drive premium version at 0 to 62 in 6.9 seconds, where it is seven seconds for the rear wheel drive premium version. However, if you get the all-wheel drive premium version that we've got here today, it's 5.8 seconds to 62 and 4.4 seconds for the GT version. When it comes to charging, using a home charge DC point, the worst is the Select, charging at 115 kilowatts and it's 56 miles of charge every 10 minutes. And the best is the rear wheel drive premium edition, charging at 150 kilowatts, charging 73 miles every 10 minutes, with the other two somewhere in the middle, 61 and 66. Using a fast charger, where the top three charge to 80% in 45 minutes, the select version does it in just 38 minutes. Not as fast as a Tesla, but okay, I guess. Now I am seeing charge points pop up all over the place now, and a lot of them are 150 kilowatts. However, you go to the big super fast ones, they're about 300 to 350 kilowatts. That's where you get your 80% in 20 minutes charge. However, my 23 year old Audi A8 charges from empty to full in about three minutes. Yeah, beat that. So let's take a closer look at some of the features here. Well, as you might have noticed, there's no door handle. With your key in your pocket, you just literally push that button and it pops open like that. Isn't that lovely? Something to go wrong there. And on the driver's door, you get exactly the same. 
push that and you get a little handle to open it. If for any reason though that the key doesn't work, you've got a numbered keypad here and when you buy your car you get the key number itself and you can program it on the dash in there and I'll show you, I don't know if you can see from there, I'll bring you in for a closer look. See the numbered keypad there, it's not quite showing up but if you run your fingers over it there you go look you've got numbered keypads and you just type in whatever the number is and it lets you in. I like that. The boot is of course electronic, just push the button under there and uh, up it goes revealing the 402 litres of boot space. Uh, you get another 100 litres in the what they call it frunk, which is the front trunk, the front boot to you and I in the UK, trunk to the Americans, or frunk, hip word. Anyway, yes, so that is only a total of 502 litres of space. Now, my Audi A8, again, which I like to refer to, has 525 litres of space. However, what's more impressive is that when you put the seats down, you get just under 1,500 litres of boot space. That's quite impressive. Again, to close it, just push the button. Please close, thank you. So kind. By pulling twice on the lever here, it opens the frunk. <laughs> Stupid word. Oh, no flicky thing. Um, and there is the workings and stuff. And then in here is your 100 litre space, which uh, will take the cables. And a weekend bag, I'm sure. Oh, look, that's come out. Interesting. Um, what's under there? Let's have a look. I'm guessing that's where you get to the lights and stuff. Can't open it now. Oh, that's uh, a, a oh headlight adjustment screw. Interesting. Very good. Right. Uh, then you got your um, washers there. LED lights, obviously. Um, and, but you do get a nice Mustang emblem under there. I like that. It's a nice touch. That. That's quite nice. Not that you need to go in here much, unless you want to get your your weekend bag out of your frunk. Oh, I've got to stop saying that. Um, uh, this, oh, it's an emergency release button. Interesting. So if you ever get stuck in your 100 litre frunk, you can get out. <laughs> Maybe a child gets in there and you go, oh, well, there's no space in the back. And we've got more than three children. Damn, stick one in here. Right, let's stop and let out the front child. Right. I don't like to slam bonnets. So then, let's get out on the road and see what it drives like, shall we? And I'll talk more about the equipment you get and what it feels like to be inside here. Um, and I have to say, right off the bat, it's simple, but luxurious. All right, I'll see you on the inside. Now, before I drive away, what I will do is put up a list of everything you get with the base select model, and then I'll show you the differences after that. So here I am inside the Mac E, somewhere where I'd never thought I'd be. Initial reaction, I hate myself. That's the initial reaction, I hate myself. Why? Because I'm finding myself liking a Mustang that isn't a Mustang. Well, it is technically, but it's not, is it? You know, I mean, I have a 1971 seven litre V8 Mustang. I used to have a 2006 4.6 litre V8 Mustang. I love V8s. I love the sound of it. Now, as you know, um, when I had my Ford Transit Custom, I had the electronic exhaust system on there and everybody thought it was a V8. 
So to get round it, I could have one of these with an electronic exhaust system on it. So what I need to do is drive it like a car that's electric, not a Mustang replacement. Now I know it's difficult because I am looking at the Mustang badge on the uh, steering wheel there. And um, that says Mustang. And the steering wheel is exactly the same as you'd find in the petrol version of the Mustang, along with the buttons on here everything sort of screams Mustang as far as the steering wheel is concerned. However, nothing else about it is Mustang, apart from the horse on the front and on the back. Um, I, <laughs> I really like it. Now I've been driving this around for a while now um, on this 48 hour test drive and um, I'm, I'm really getting used to it very quickly. There is a one pedal system um, where you only use the accelerator and you don't need to use the brake because it will adaptively brake for you. I don't like that because that takes away any form of driving. So that, as far as I'm concerned, no. You can have it, fine, but I don't want it. Um, it is quiet, although when you put your foot down, you get a lot of a, a V8 hum um, electronically through the stereo, I believe, which um, sort of makes you feel they're trying, but <laughs> it just isn't, is it? Um, the seats are comfortable, the steering wheel is comfortable. Um, I need to move the seat back a tiny touch, actually. Um, I like the way it feels. Uh, the re steering is really responsive. Um, in a minute, when we get on the dual carriageway, I'm going to punch it and you'll see what I mean by power. It's, just, it's laughable, to be honest. It really is. It sort of shocked me the second, or the first time, sorry, um, I pulled away from the traffic lights. What I was going to say is the second I pulled away from the traffic lights, um, I was just shocked at how much power it's got. Now, this is the premium all-wheel drive version, so it's got a bit of poke. Um, and it's just phenomenal i'm really impressed with how punchy it is and i've got to get out of my head that it's not a mustang however the price point that it's at is the equivalent it's on par with the um the uh, petrol versions uh like i was saying before so i don't know if it's enough i mean let me just pause that thought for a second we're coming up to the dual carriageway I'm going to go around this roundabout very gingerly and I'm going to floor it. And <laughs> 70. I mean, <laughs> it's got some poke. It really has. I mean, it really does push your head back into the headrest quite nicely. It punches you back. And yeah, I mean, that's just fantastic. I'm going to do it again off this roundabout because you can't get bored of that. <laughs> it brings a big smile to my face. Oh dear. Something else I like um, is the bulge of that rear wheel arch as you look out of the uh, wing mirror. And the last time I said that, I was in the GT350 quite a while ago, if you can remember. So I'm glad they've kept that. That's a good look. Right, so gingerly round this roundabout, like so. And ready. Jesus Christ. I mean, that goes. That really goes. I would never get bored of that. Which says to me that the range they claim is rubbish. Because when I drive it, not a chance will it do 200 miles or 200 plus miles on a charge. Because I've just been flying everywhere I went. However, because of its silence and you don't get that V8 burble, apart from, listen, I'm going to be very quiet here, ready? You get that? So you do get that sort of electronic synthesised V8 burble inside the cabin as though it wants to be a V8 and it's trying to make you feel as though you're in a V8, but you're not. So. I mean, the, the same could be said for having an electronic exhaust. 
except the world can hear it. <laughs> and I like that. <laughs> so again, we're going to go um, round this roundabout and I'm going to do the same thing again because um, it never gets old. Here we are, up to the roundabout, except this time I'm going to take the roundabout a bit more spiritedly than I would so I'm ready to go. I mean that, oh yeah, oh my God, the handling. Oh my God. Oh, this isn't fair. I shouldn't like this. Everything about this says you shouldn't like this, Mark. But I really do. And I hate myself. I hate Ford. And I hate everyone involved in it because they've done it really well. However, I am gonna come back to that price. This version that I'm in is the 65,000 pound version. And does it justify spending 65 grand on this car? That all depends on where the future is heading as far as electric is concerned. Is the infrastructure going to be there? Now, as I've been thinking more about electric, I've been seeing electric points all over the place. It's like the old thing where, you know, you don't see many of a car until you've actually owned that car and then you see them everywhere. It's the same thing. And I'm only noticing now electric points everywhere I look, whereas before I didn't really notice them. So you could argue that I've never really looked at it before until now and I'm seeing them all over the place. Um, home electric points are popping up all over the place. Um, for a premium one, it's gonna cost you about two grand to get the... <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> Bloody hell! <laughs> oh, that is amazing! Oh my God! <laughs> I just, oh, oh. Oh dear. Oh. oh. <laughs> that's, 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 oh. Oh. That is awesome. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that's rendered me pretty speechless, really, for that brief moment. And I know that's quite rare for me, and I'm sorry. <laughs> oh dear. So anyway, yes, electric points are propping up all over the place. Propping up, cropping up all over the place. Um, so I don't think that's gonna be a worry at the moment. However, when the world is driving electric cars, is the infrastructure going to be able to handle it? And that is still something at the back of my mind that is bothering me. Is the world gonna be ready for electric ever if the world is electric? <sighs> that's always gonna be a worry for me and I don't really know what to do about that thought. Um, if it wasn't for that, I can certainly see the sense of it. Uh, with electronic exhaust, and so you can get round the sound thing, that's always a bugbear for me, but you can get round it, as proven with my transit van. And again, I know it's not a genuine sound, but let's be honest, it is just a sound. And other than that, this has oodles amount of power. And what I find interesting is that as far as power is concerned and price is concerned, it is right on par with, oh, it's behind me. Let's go around the roundabout then. It's right on par with the um, petrol versions. And what I mean by that is um, the base model of this, the Select, is 50,000 pounds. The base model of the petrol version is £50,000. The GT, uh, or the Mac 1 version of the petrol, uh, 0-60 is 4.4 seconds. The GT version of this, 0-62, is 4.4 seconds. Um, however, the top price of this, the GT, is seventy-five grand, whereas the Mac 1 petrol version is only sixty grand, And that's a £15,000 difference, and I don't know if that's enough to justify getting the electric or whether you don't have a choice because they're going to so heavily tax the petrol vehicles that electric is the only way forward. 
However, is that a government way of getting people out of cars altogether and on buses? That is a thought. I don't know, and I can't answer that question right now. We can only speculate. Perhaps you can answer that question if you're in the government. If you're not, well, if you, if you are in the government, are you going to tell the truth? Hmm? Are you? Hmm. So what I'm going to do now is um, switch over to uh, having a passenger with me. Um, I will introduce you to the one and only Patrick. And here he is. Hello. So Patrick, what do you think? Um, I, I like the big screen with like, there's like, you can press sketch, you can also, you can also go onto this thing. Radio. Radio. You can choose lots of different radio stations. And you can choose sketch so you can draw around, but it doesn't work when you're driving because I think it's unsafe. That's right. I also like when you press the button. Stunk. The, the, the getting in the car button. Yes. Yes, the door, ha it can't really call it a door handle because it hasn't really got one. It, it, it does like a little one. It's got a little mini one on the driver's door, but not on the back. It just sort of pops the door open, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, and then you have to pull it. All right, are you ready? Yeah. I'll show you how quick this thing is. Are you, so we're, we're only doing, at the moment, we're doing... 30 miles an hour. Uh, let's do 28, and I'm just going to take it up to 40. Are you ready? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Uh, that's, he's not religious. He's <laughs> shocked. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Fast. That's the first time you've experienced that, isn't it? Oh. And that was only from 25 to 40. I want to go on the dual carriageway. Yeah, we're going to go on the dual carriageway and you'll see how, how quick it accelerates. <laughs> so this car comes with a three-year warranty and a 10-year battery warranty. It does indeed. Now, the good thing about that is that... Um, uh, you see, one of my initial things was, yeah, OK, it comes with a 10-year battery warranty, but what after 10 years? if you need to replace the battery. That's going to be thousands and thousands. Well, there's two things that make that sound better. One, Ford say, and I will say Ford say, um, they reckon a 2% um, degradation, is that the right word, I think, <laughs> um, of the cells per year, 2%. So after 10 years, that's 20% maximum of what you'll lose in the battery's output, the battery's power. Um, the other thing is that when it comes to replacing the battery, you haven't got to replace the entire battery. It's made up of lots of different cells. So all they do is plug it in, see which cells are blown or faulty or dead, and just replace that actual cell. So you haven't got to buy a whole new battery, you've just got to re replace the cells that are damaged or broken or run out. So that should make it a lot easier and a lot cheaper. Um, again, they're going to get cheaper as the years go on. Um, everything is going to be a lot cheaper in 10 years time when it comes to replace the battery. Um, but that also means when this battery warranty runs out on this car, you'll be an adult. Yeah, it's true. I'll be 18. Exactly. I mean, that is pretty impressive I would say a long, 10 year a battery long warranty. time it is right we're coming out to the dual carriageway now are you ready to feel the power <laughs> of this Mustang which is electric which you hate <laughs> no I don't I love it <laughs> I, I, I used to hate it right, are you ready we're going around here <laughs> very gingerly are you ready and <laughs> Jesus this is fast 70 17. I mean, that gets to 70 pretty quick. And it gets to 70 during going around, around, about. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that was impressive, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah. You like it? Yeah. So, look around the cabin and tell me, is there anything cabin. you don't like? Yeah, that's what this is called, the cabin. What? That's weird. So, don't something you don't like. What do you mean, don't say that? That's it's what weird. it's called. It's called it's, a cabin. It's weird. Well, you're weird. No, you're weird. <laughs> You're with for calling it a cabin because a cabin you live in. Okay, should we see how well this goes round a roundabout? Yes. I mean, the brakes are superb as well. Yes. So, we're going to pull away from this roundabout. Ready and. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> I mean, it's sticking to it really well and then. Jeez. <laughs> I mean, how awesome is that? <laughs> That's pretty cool, huh? <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. For electric, it is really far for electric. That never gets old and that never gets boring. What? 
that is something that kind of acceleration yeah I mean that is just awesome unless they get a faster one in a 10 years <laughs> well yeah it might be lightning quick yeah well um, it's got lots of different features in here obviously you've got your electric windows the uh, electric seats heated seats if you want those you've got the um, oh there's someone coming alongside me bit in the mirror which a lot of cars have got these days um, various different features uh, all this is a speaker it's got the uh, Bang & Olufsen um, system um, I don't know if I like the indicator clunk <laughs> I like it, it you, sounds... you can change it it sounds satisfying but, does it satisfying does it really okay that's Why does my... that, that keeps going up and down that's the tripod um, the tripod rolling around in the back <laughs> Um, so, yes, uh, what we'll do now is transfer the uh, urchin to the back and uh, we'll see what he feels about it as a passenger. So in let's the rear. click and I'll be All right, magically so you're ready. back. Three, Three two, two, one. Ta da! I'm at the back. So, it is comfy at the back. You can take this out and put your arm on it, rest on it. You can sleep on it, whatever you want <laughs> to do on it. You can put your coffee or latte or whatever the things parents drink or kids drink like mcdonald's milkshakes you can put all of that here you can drink it um <laughs> what's funny nothing you can drink it you can not drink it you can <laughs> think about drinking it <laughs> you can look at it whilst wondering whether you should drink it <laughs> oh dear um so how does it feel what do the seats feel like are they comfortable the same as in front same as the front? Yeah. So is that comfortable? Yeah. Yeah? Do you prefer being in the back or in the front? Front. Why is that? Because I, I, I like the, the touch screen thing. And because I like seeing where you drive. Like seeing where you drive, yes. I don't, okay. I don't like being like a baby at the back. You're not a baby, you're just a, a young person. Rude. Urchin, if you will. What's that? Um, uh, it means awesome young person. <laughs> so at this stage I just want to show you um, what the screen looks like now it turns into a massive reversing camera um, with obviously the uh, the lines when you change the steering wheel um, a lot of cars have that these days but I like how big it is on that screen um, obviously with the let's not call it a Tesla sized screen um, 360 camera which you can change you've got parking sensors that you can turn off uh, you can change um, how the car is looked at like so um, I do quite like that that's quite nice um, obviously when you put it in drive um, that goes off and then you're back to your main screen uh, once you've driven forward but we'll show you that in a second so we'll reverse out of this parking space nice and softly very quiet and then back into drive and away we go and then that will change back to the main screen thusly um, obviously you can have the stereo uh, at the moment we've got the uh, sat nav which doesn't really go anywhere um, interesting that's all right you can go because I'm on a hill where are you going stalled it I can't do that <laughs> that's a good advantage you can't store your car and you don't end up looking like a bell end. So that's good. That's one plus for the electric car. Uh, I love this massive panoramic sunroof. That is lovely, really nice. Uh, obviously uh, UV protected glass, but I really do like that. Uh, you can obviously get rid of that. Um, you've got your radio on here, DAB radio, of course. Uh, connect your phone, which is here. But I'm just gonna do an example of pulling out of here. And I'm gonna floor it. Ooh. <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> Love that. You don't get any drift, you don't get any wheel spin. However, because I am in untamed mode, I believe, and I'm just gonna double check that to make sure I am in untamed mode, you can drift these if you really wanna give it some. Uh, sketch, you can do that. Uh, if you want, you can um, draw. For your safety, it's been disabled. I'm not allowed to draw whilst driving. But your passenger can have a little draw, or you can stop and have a little draw. What is the point of that? But look. 
70, 68, close enough. Love that, love that. That's never gonna get old, ever. So let's see what we've got in terms of um, things on the car. No, I can change my profile, I don't wanna do that. Um, home button, owner's manual. Uh, no, tyre pressure. Someone told me that they looked, looked like my tyre pressure was down, so let's have a look. Um, no? Okay, it's about right. A little bit less on the left than it is on the right. No idea why that is, but don't worry about it. Um, what else have we got? What's this? Sat now. Yeah, I thought it was. Um, it's a nice big screen. It's very easy to see, and it's uh, very touch-friendly. I do like that. Uh, you can change, obviously, you've got heated seats here, uh, you've got your heated mirrors, um, your blower, heated steering wheel and your right heated seat. I'm currently getting some 4G. Let's have a look at the settings. Was that phone settings? I think that's phone settings. Um, we don't want that. Launch! Not bored. Oh, so much fun. And it doesn't seem to sap the range either, to be honest. I mean, I've been doing that quite a lot. And um, in the sort of 12, 13 miles I've done so far, uh, looking at the range as it was, as I had said, I had 163 miles of range. And in the 12 miles I've done, it's down to 155. That's not bad. It's only eight miles of usage in the 12 miles I've done. That's pretty impressive. I like that. Um, I am going to pull over in a second and just have a fiddle to see what I can work out in terms of um, the car's functions. Back into ginger mode. That sounds quite um, ging gingerist, doesn't it? Let's not call it that. Gingerly driven, driving, drovenated mode. Pull into a nice clean lay-by, because they're all clean. Ooh. Into park. And relax. Right, so let's have a look, see what we've got in terms of functions. Um, okay, Apple CarPlay, Android Play. Uh, under here you've got a charge point, so you can charge your phone on here. Also, um, owner's manual. Um, what are you looking for? I don't know, let's have a look. Categories. General information, lots of stuff, etc., etc. What about these? Do these move across? So you've got your radio, tire pressures, um, turn the whole system off. So if you want to have a look at the functions, it's this button here, and it tells you all you need to know about the car. So I'm in untamed mode, which is why I can launch really nicely. Now, what I am going to do is do three different launches. One in Untame, one in Active, and one Whisper. Um, when I say launches, I'm gonna do a crawl when there's an empty road, and then floor it and see what the difference is. So we'll start in Whisper mode, and we'll see what it's like. So there is no traffic. So we'll pull out here, and we will floor it. Up to 60. Yeah, it's okay. It's what you would expect an electric car to do. It's still quite quick, but not really brilliant. Now there's nothing behind me whatsoever, so I'm just gonna slow down to a crawl, put it in active mode here, slow down to uh, 10 miles an hour. Then I'm gonna do the same again, in active mode. Tiny bit of a delay. But up to 60, no problem. Uh, again, still nothing behind me, so I'm gonna put it in untamed mode, and I'm going to um, slow down to 10 miles an hour again and do the same again. So down to 10, and then... It's a lot more aggressive. Um, you've got a little bit of a roar going on there as well. Um, as I say, in untamed mode, it's just do what you like. It just flies. I love that uh, sound. So let's have a look at the sound systems you've got. Now, this is only for the stereo, I believe. 
uh, you can change where the sound comes from, like you can with a lot of stereos, it's nothing special, let's be honest. Um, phone list, don't have to worry about that, driver assist, uh, you can put cruise control on, it's adaptive cruise control, um, you can turn that off if you want to, speed limit assist, lane assist, pre-collision assist, uh, rear view camera, you can turn all these things off, driver alerts. Um, there is one thing that Ford does have though that a lot of the EVs, in fact I don't think any other EV has, and that is, if you can see here, this panel on here. Now you might ask what it's for. Well that is um, sort of self-drive mode, shall we say. Um, this beam in here recognises your eyes, and as long as you're looking forward and you're looking at the road ahead, it will work and uh, it will allow you to drive the car. Um, if you cover that up or, or if you look away and that is active, it will start to slow the vehicle down because it thinks you're not in control. Um, so it's a function that I personally would never want because why do you want a self-driving car? Some people do, I don't. So as far as I'm concerned, that's a waste of time. But it has it. Uh, maybe in the future when we're on motorways that have this kind of self-drive mode where it can keep you in the lane and it can brake when it feels like it and steer when you feel like it going around corners and you don't have to do anything other than have a snooze, then so be it. But um, I personally am not that bothered about that. Um, software updates. Uh, this one recently has had a software update. Um, but uh, all sorts of stuff about the vehicle as well. So in there you've got various different stuff, how the wipers work, what the chimes do, the alarm, um, would change the uh, serial number to get in the door, which is my key, easy entry, you can turn that on and off. Um, lots of different stuff here, all sorts of different things. I could spend all day talking just about that, but I won't, that's up to you to do. Um, Connectivity, obviously we're connected at the moment, Ford Assistant, valet mode, um, if you want someone to drive it and not launch it like you do, or the driver does, because it's fun. Um, so yeah, lots of functions that you can play with, or your passenger can play with. But of course, you should do it whilst you're watching the road at the same time, because that's what all professional drivers do. And we still can't have a sketch. So, oh, um, inside the car, as I say, uh, it's a bit minimalist. You've literally got your gear lever knob here, hazard flashes there, your parking uh, brake there. Um, it does have the ability to hold the brake uh, if you're in drive mode. If you put it in neutral, it won't hold the brake. You actually physically have to turn it on yourself, or you can just put it in park where it brakes anyway. Other than that, you don't have much. It's a pretty clean cabin. Um, I, I like the look of it, although I do like buttons. Now, I like the Audi S8, as you know, uh, and I also like the um, Porsche Panamera, because you've got the console with all these like, 16, 17 buttons in the middle, and I like buttons. I mean, here, all your buttons are on that. So it's still got buttons, they're just hidden on a massive, let's not call it an iPad. So yeah, there you go. There's not really much to talk about in here, because it's pretty simple. It's quite basic, it's comfortable, it's quiet. The seats are lovely, they feel really nice and soft. And um, I, I've got no problem with driving long distance in this whatsoever. Uh, the only thing you do get is the risk of a headache because when you floor it, it smacks your head <laughs> into the uh, headrest. But again, it is nice and soft, so it's quite cushioning. As you're driving along, if you don't have the stereo on, it's just quiet, you've got sort of a, a whistly hum. See if you can hear it. It's quite an unusual sound, isn't it? But obviously, once you've got the stereo up, you won't really notice that. Okay, so again, pulling out of the um, slow zone and Launch! God, that is so good. I really do like that. And I do like the fact that the range isn't going down anywhere near as much as I thought it would. I thought it would plummet. 
but it really doesn't. Still got 51% of the battery left. And uh, there's no signs of it letting up. Oh, so good, you pull out of a corner, especially with this all-wheel drive. Be interesting to see what it's like with a rear-wheel drive version, what the difference is. But you come into a corner, um, it gets around there very nicely, and away it goes. Wow. Yeah, I like that. That is impressive. And it doesn't wallow. It's quite solid on the road, so you don't feel sick when you're doing it. I can't say the same for a passenger, but as a driver, I'm quite easy to feel sick in a vehicle. Um, I made myself feel sick in a go-kart and even threw up in my helmet because of the way it made me feel. And this is quite go-kart-esque in the way it sticks to the roads, but it feels so planted, so easy to drive, uh, lovely to drive. I, I've, oh, I've kind of fallen in love with this car, to be honest. I mean, it's showing me on here as well, look, that I'm in the lanes. If I go across the white line, look, it's telling me uh, you're on the white line now. don't have to launch it you can pull into a corner quite nicely and it serenely and smoothly takes you uh, up to the speed limit no dramas whatsoever but if you want to launch it you can and let's be honest with this kind of power under your foot it's very difficult not to just go like that so fun so if I was to pull onto the white line here See, it's giving me a warning that there's a, a line. It's interesting. Um, I can see because obviously I've, I've got eyes, but uh, for those of you that want to look at a screen rather than... Oh no, that's gone now. I don't understand how that works. Oh no, it's moving around. Whatever. We'll ignore that. We don't want that. I'd rather look ahead. You've got a nice big speedo on here, which is quite easy to see. Um, it's just nothing to hate about it even though it's not a Mustang it isn't a Mustang it's not a Mustang it's not a Mustang it is but it isn't if you know what I mean it is a Mustang but it's not a Mustang now I asked the um, Ford guy about this as to why they called it a Mustang and he summed it up quite easily bearing in mind the tech it's got and the power it's got it had to be at a certain price point and they wouldn't be able to demand the money that it is without the name Mustang written on it. And I can see his point there. If this had Ford Fusion written on it, you'd think, wow, that's an expensive Ford Fusion. But because it's got Mustang written on it, you kind of expect it to be a bit more expensive. So you don't mind spending that extra money because it is a Mustang, even though it's not a Mustang, it, it is. And that makes sense to me. I, I kind of see what he means. Damn and blast. I hate you, Ford, so much. You've made me like something. No, love something that I really wanted to hate. It's such a nice car to drive. Now, I know I haven't driven a, a great deal of EVs. And I want to get out in the um, Kia EV6 to see how that compares, because I love the look of that. That's a beautiful looking car. Um, I don't think it's going to be as quick as this, but I still want to try it in comparison. However, let's see what the little monkey has to say about it. So, um, there we go. This is the Mustang Mackie. Mach e. What do you think? Um, my favourite bit is the touch screen. What about, in comparison to your favourite car that you will not stop banging on about? Tesla. Yeah. No, 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 I don't want a Tesla, I want a Bugatti. Oh, you want a Bugatti? Yes, yeah, a Bugatti. Oh, oh okay. Can well, you buy that? No, a Bugatti is not happening. Because it's millions of dollars. Um, a Tesla is too predictable. It's like the, I've got an electric car, what you got? I've got a Tesla. Oh, boring. Oh, we got a Mustang, let's show Mackie.
So, what do you think? I mean, bearing in mind, this car is £65,000. Jeez, that is a lot. Now, um, uh, you know the Mac 1, the, the new 5-litre Mustang, well, the Mac 1, which is the, the biggest power, luxurious, <laughs> uh, fastest one they do. Yes. With that thumping V8 engine. Boom, 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 boom. That yes. is £5,000 cheaper than this actual car. How does that make sense? Which one would you think would be the better buy? The other one, because apparently it's the fastest one and the better one. So... Well, speed-wise, that's not too dissimilar. Well, it is, actually. It's quicker mm -hmm. on acceleration than this, but the same acceleration as the top range of the electric one, the mm -hmm. GT. It's just electric's a bit slower because it is electric. And you say when you drove past McDonald's, there was a Tesla thing, you shouted electric will fight, which is the <laughs> weirdest thing I have ever heard in my life, and I hope you never do it again. <laughs> What did I say? Electric will what? Electric will fail. <laughs> yes. And you I... shouted it in front of everyone there, well, they were which, having... which is embarrassing. Well, not really. I mean, they were having a, a, a press conference thing and they were having a launch. And I thought in my, um, in my... Tiny little brain that has what actually no say. brain in it and does not think, <laughs> you thought to shout electric will fail, which embarrassed me and my granddad. Well, what I was going to say was, not in, in my tiny little brain, in my world, um, I was in a um, petrol-guzzling V6 and, um, and an old-school Audi, and uh, I thought it was funny. Like, like, the, like the Audi three, you own Three of the now? people that I talked to all laughed, and so did the, uh, the guy who was the engineer installing it. He laughed his head off. So they thought it was funny. Are you ready? Here we go, from the back. Gee, it's harder at the back. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Oh. Okay, it's better at the back if you. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> that is awesome. Right. Let's stop, and I want to show you a special feature of this car. Um, now, in the back there, you've got seating for three, haven't you? Yes. And seating for two at the front here, but this car has an extra special seat for another child. But you'll have to see in a bit, so don't skip the video and carry on watching. Well, we're going to cut to that right now, so don't yes. go away much. Yeah. <laughs> and the one thing I like about the back is the middle seat is way bigger than normal, usual cars, so if you are with your friends, it's not that um, not cosy. Oh, it's not that not cosy. <laughs> that's excellent. That's a that's a double negative, <laughs> um, which means it is cosy. That works. It's not that not cosy. It, it is cosy. I think. Does that make sense? No, I don't think. It All right, let's pull sense. over and try out this special seat. Bye bye until like what, one minute to us, but like one second to you because we're cutting the video. So bye. Okay, open the frunk. What's it called? A frunk. Because it's a front trunk. Don't. It's a whole thing. Don't worry about it. Weirdo. Yeah. Again. <coughs> so what is it? And there it is. The special seat. Wait, you cannot breathe and you will die if you stay in there. Ah, no. Because it's got this feature in here, look. You can open it from the inside. Yeah, but then it will be open and exposed. Yeah. Mm. Well, you don't want to try it though, do you? I what don't. are you doing? I'm getting it. Try you, it. Are you sure? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Because I've got this whole thing now of you getting stuck in there and I don't want to have to drive to Ford with you in the front. <laughs> Are you sure? Yes. Okay. Um, this, is, uh, th this, is, this is not irresponsible at all. This is a test that you're volunteering for, by the way. Right. Okay. Can I have a camera to put in there so they can see off? Me? I'll have the camera. You have that camera. No. I've got the camera. So no one can see me in there? They can't. You're right. Can I have a camera then? No, but what I'm going to do is put you in. Yeah. Look, looks like it's magic. Right. Okay. I'm gonna. I'm gonna close it. It's gonna it. hurt me because it's thing. I'm too big. Let's see. I won't hurt you. <laughs> Ooh, this feels weird. All right. Can you reach the button, by the way? No, I can't. Can you reach the button? No. No. There you go. And again. 
That's it. Yay! <laughs> Me oh, that was weird. No, I, I didn't like that. Minute. No, definitely not. Why? I didn't like that. Come on, let you come. Why do you not like that? I didn't like that. Let me grab you out. I don't want you to jump on the car. Hang on. So one thing we'll do is um, just push that button in the middle. In the middle. In there. That's it. All right. See if you can draw us a picture. I know that's what you want to do. <laughs> Leave them a nice picture on there. Which one is to draw? Draw. Uh, draw a Mustang mach -E. Why have you done it in brown? You can't turn it around. <laughs> you do it on brown, on black, you're not gonna be able to see it, are you? That's it. That's, uh, that's mountains. <laughs> All right, um, let's do a, uh, hang on. That's me, by the way. There's a Mustang mach -E. Hang on, let's have some wheels. Put a wheel in there, that's it. You know I can't draw when you're drawing. Oh, oh that's weird. Because, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, it's got stripes down it. Uh, someone's damaged it now. Look. Someone's definitely damaged it. Yeah, let's get rid of that. <laughs> How do we get rid of that? Uh, no idea. Save it. Now, size-wise, it's not as big as you might think. 4.7 meters long, 1.88 meters wide, and 1.6 meters tall. And yes, I am standing on the curb. If I'm not standing on the curb, there you go, you see me. You might just see the top of my bald dome. Inside this premium all-wheel drive version, you do have a very nice interior, nice leather. I want to call it leather, but it probably isn't. Um, the seats are electric, of course. Uh, you've got the Mustang emblem on the uh, door there, you see. Um, everything is quite easy to touch, quite simplistic, as I said, and uh, nice and modern. What you've also got is this uh, little panel down here. So you can have your uh, front screen heater on and your light switch, uh, it's on automatic. Um, and your dip, and no longer dip, of your um another nonsense of your instrument panel uh, and of obviously your traction control you can turn off as well that's quite handy and in the back it is equally as luxurious lovely comfortable seats now this seat is in the position i would have it in because the engine's running apparently um but here i've got look so much leg room there's certainly enough space in here for three adults and i've got um that much headroom that's not bad at all, that's pretty impressive. I love this huge roof in here. It looks fantastic and you'll see that, um, or you saw that earlier whilst I was driving. It's just oodles of space, nice and luxurious. You've got a couple of USBs or a USB and a USB-C in here. Um, other than that, not a lot. Great view, great visibility, nice and comfortable. So what about the price? Now there, there's a difference. The base select model is just under 51,000 pounds. Incidentally, pretty much the same price as the 450 brake horsepower base five litre GT petrol Mustang. The um, rear wheel drive premium version is just under 59,500 pounds. The all wheel drive premium like this one here is just under 65,500 pounds. And the top GT fast model with the extra special body kit and the uber quick uh, 0 to 62 time I say uber quick, it's one and a half seconds quicker than this, that's all. Um, that is 75 and a half thousand pounds. Now, if you wanted to get the 460 brake horsepower, naught to 62 in 4.4 seconds, like the GT electric, Mac one petrol, five liter thing, that's gonna cost you 60 grand. 15 grand cheaper than the top of the range electric version of this. And I don't know if that's worth it. 
Um, the select base model, bearing in mind all the equipment you get, is a pretty decent package. Um, however, I have to say this all-wheel drive version is pretty special. I love the way it handles. I haven't driven the rear-wheel drive, but I don't think it's going to be anywhere near as on rails as this is. Um, for 65 grand, that's a lot of money. It is a lot of money. 65 grand. But you get one hell of a machine. Now it's 15 grand more than the base model, and if you just want a Mustang Mach-E, because it's a Mustang, maybe the base model would be okay. But I don't know if I could be okay with the looks of that, because without the body kit and the 18 inch wheels, it doesn't look that special. <sighs> be interesting to see how much a body kit and a set of wheels would be for one of these. And if it's less than 15 grand, I would say get the select model and just get a different body kit and different wheels. They all come in the same eight colors, so you haven't got to worry about it being a special color for the GT version. So yeah, that's probably what I would do. Um, price up the uh, body kit and the wheels, and then just get the select version. Unless of course you want all wheel drive. Do you need it? I don't know, you've got quite a bit of torque coming out of one of these. Um, but then again, perhaps that makes it more Mustang-like. Gets a bit tail end happy. Who knows? I'm just bringing you outside for a second and showing you these lights, um, LED lights. Uh, I like the indicators as well. Cool, they're not some bright LED lights. I like those. Um, love the indicators there. And we'll have a look around the back of the lights as well. That noise you can hear is because the air conditioning is on inside the car and the car is switched on. Uh, obviously, you've got them on the uh, mirrors there as well. And around the back. Uh, they're lovely, I like them. They are very Mustang-esque, I have to say. But yeah, I do like them. The badge is a proper badge, which is something I also like as well. I was worried that it was just going to be a sticker, but it is a proper badge, so that's quite handy. Handy, it's not handy at all, it's just nice. Don't like those wheels. I would change those. That one is also a badge as well, and I thought it was a sticker. So now I'm back, I'm uh, gonna have to let the bird out because she's performing acrobats in there and making all sorts of noise because she wants to come out and get the attention. What are you doing? You feel you need to do that now, do you? Will you be quiet if I let you out? Hello? Never uh, another presenter. There you go. <sighs> right, do not eat that. Don't eat that. What are you, you going to say? Don't eat that. Don't eat that. Good girl. Okay, I just want to talk through some of the options and the finance. Okay, I just want to talk through some of the options and the finance that I was getting uh, details on. Now, it's not as straightforward as uh, let's have it be done. I want that and that and that because it's not quite that straightforward at all. You have to excuse me, I need to wear my glasses. Um, I've got my special guest with me because she won't be quiet. Leave the microphone alone. This is Rosie, by the way. Say hello, Rosie. No, haven't had it very long. Lovely. Kiss, kiss. Good girl. Right, so. Now, when it comes to the options, I wanted the select car with the upgraded body kit and the upgraded wheels. However, Ford have decided you can't have that. If you want the select version, you only get the 18 inch wheels and you don't get the body kit. I agree. However, you can perhaps get the front valance or the front, front splitter um, and you can get the rear diffuser. So that might be an option, the front valance splitter and the rear diffuser on the select option. But 
they advised me that I would have to have aftermarket wheels. Because on the select version, you can only get the 18 inch wheels. On the premium version, you can only get the 19 inch wheels and you can only have the 20 inch wheels on the GT version. You can't change them. Now I would have thought of all the companies, Ford would be the one that would first let you upgrade different options. But they said, no, you can only have aftermarket ones. So you could have to get your own wheels. How stupid is that? I agree. I like the 20 inch wheels, but I can't have them on the select version. They won't let me. So that's ridiculous. Now, the reason why I said the select version is because it's the cheapest option and I wanted to get the financial price for that. So, Rosie, come here. Good girl. So, there's three different financial options that they've offered me. I agree. I, I really do agree. Have, have a read. Do you need my glasses? Yeah, have a look. Mm, okay. So, option one. Now, I have to say that the car we had had the Tech Pack Plus, which has got the optional extras like the um, the self-close door and the uh, like the illuminating lights and stuff like that. And um, if you want to know exactly what the Tech Pack Tech Pack Plus is, have a look on the Ford website. That'll tell you. So. The new Ford Mustang Mach-E Select in orange, obviously, um, which is the 75 kilowatt hour, 269 brake horsepower car, not the uh, 91 kilowatt hour, 350 brake horsepower one that I was driving, only rear wheel drive. Um, comes out with the tech pack at 55,329 pounds and 12 P with a £10,000 deposit that I would pay, um, £500 deposit allowance that Ford give me, okay, um, over 48 months would be £481.19p per month, and a final payment of £21,732. Now that's 0% interest for four years with a 9,000 mile limit per year. Now that sounds quite a lot to me. 481 pounds a month for four years. Yes, plus I pay a 10,000 pound deposit and a final payment of 21,700 pound. So, now that is if I get the base model. I will say there are options you can get. Rosie, come look at the options with me. Rosie, Rosie, come on. Here, come here. So, the options are plentiful. Yeah, there's lots of options. Yeah, give me a kiss. Do you not like my glasses? I don't often wear them, do I? I look weird with them, do I? Yeah, I need them to read this kind of stuff. All right, you go and do your thing. Um, so yeah, this is the list of options. There's a whole page of them. Now, I'm gonna just read a few of these out because there are lots, like tow bars and uh, all the little trays you can put in and like the tray covers, like the boot liner and stuff like that. Um, but there's a few that stand out. If you want rear mud flaps, they're 46 pounds. Um, if you want a matte black coat hanger, okay, <laughs> it's 45 pounds 59p. 45 pounds for a coat hanger. I'd rather buy a jacket for 45 pounds, have a jacket and get a free coat hanger with it. Uh, can you can you move a sec, please? Thank you. Um, locking wheel nuts. Locking wheel nuts. 75 quid. 75 quid for locking wheel nuts. Can you believe that? 75 quid for locking wheel nuts. Yes. Yes, it is. Um, what else have we got? Um, 
cargo organizer, a soft sided cargo organizer, 136 pounds. A, a frunk liner, a sleeping headrest, wind deflectors, front and rear, and a uh, load compartment mat. Don't eat my microphone. Um, that is 282 pounds. Where are you? Come here. Come here. Um, it's just a, a whole load, a boot liner, which is what a lot of people have, boot liner. That's 110 pounds. Come here. Yes, you will. Say hello. No? Okay. All right. That's a lot of money. Um, as I say, you can't get the 20 inch wheels, which is something I would like. So I'd have to get my own aftermarket wheels. And that's frustrating. So, yes, that's it. Um, I think that has made the decision for me. That's a lot of money. And I'm not sure I want to spend 55 grand on an electric Mustang. I might want to wait four years until someone's had one, the warranty's run out, then I buy one with an extended warranty and get it cheaper. It'd be interesting to see how much they are in a few years' time, but for now, I don't think it's viable. You can't eat that from the outside. Come here. Come here. Good girl. Yeah, that's it. Come here. Come here. You didn't like my glasses, did you? Good girl. Yeah. All right, so. So with that being said, let's head back into the car with Patrick and do the outro. Thank you very much. Yes. Because So cute. Yeah, you are cute. Hear that? Oh, 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 I know. Yes, you're lovely. Oh, so you're getting used to it now. <laughs> huh? Getting used to the uh, launch now, are you? Yeah. So, this concludes our time in the Mustang Mac E premium all wheel drive version. Um, I, I'm sold, to be honest. I like it a lot. It's a lovely car. It's a lot nicer than I expected. It's a lot nicer than I anticipated. And I'm quite annoyed with myself that I like it so much. Because you hate electric. Yeah. I thought before you said, oh, no, 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 I don't like it. I, I don't hate electric. I love it. I yeah, thought you just said that before. I, I did. Yeah, but before, like, all the time you say, like, electric sucks. Yeah, I know. Especially going through that thing saying, electric will fail. Yes, I know. And, and then after, you drive an electric car. You're crazy. Yes, and I like it. I, I know. You don't have to tell me. I know. Yeah, you know you're weird. I am. And that neatly brings us to the end of this episode. Let's try that again, shall we? And that neatly brings us to the end of this episode of Boats for the Masters. Thank you very much for joining me. I'll be back next time with something else. And he'll be back another time with something else in the future. So until next time, don't Please. forget to like, subscribe, and share this video. Click the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. <laughs> and right. until next time, please ride and drive carefully. But have fun. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Oh, <laughs> Why are you being so weird? And I've never heard you say, please subscribe and like the video and turn on turn on all the notifications and share the video. I've never heard you say that before. Well, I have said it before. No, you haven't. I have. Have not. You clearly haven't watched all my videos. What kind of tell a son the, are you? You, you guys. Watch my videos. You guys, tell me They've in the gone. comments They've if finished. he does. They've already switched off. No, 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 no. Tell me in the comments, guys, if he actually does guys. that. Um, oh, oh, so. Gentlemen watching... and woman, um, can you please Gentlemen stop? Gentlemen and woman? <laughs> Just the one? <laughs> Gentlemen and woman, and if you are the woman, please comment in the comment section below. I am the woman. <laughs> please, um, kids and um, anyone or 
anyone that's watching this, please tell me if my dad says that because I've never heard that him say that in my life, and I will not watch your channel because I like watching gamers which have okay, way so more Okay, so we're not going to we're not going to promote um, YouTubers from America that just sit there going, oh my god, I mean, like, oh my god, I mean, I mean, like, oh my god, I mean, look what we've done. I, I'm going to go ahead and we'll show you this, and then I'm going to go ahead and change that, and then we're going to go ahead and do this and that. I don't think so. Well, I no, don't no, no, this slogan no, man, you say he's American. No, you say, listen. hey, you say this YouTuber's American. He's actually English. He just lives in America. He's English. That's slogan worse. Man. How is that worse? Because he's not American and he wants to be one. He doesn't want to be one. It's just his friends are there that he play with. Plays with? How old is he? He's like in his twenties. He's in his twenties. He plays GTA and Five. He's gone to America to he's, play with his friends. He, he plays GTA Five and like that kind of games. I play and, GTA and also, Five. And he plays Minecraft and Roblox. Oh, that's all I need to know and about he, him. And he's got a new that's... channel. He's pretend. He's pretending really like. He, um, he's a fake friend to his friend, but he's saying it, but he is the person he's framing. Oh, oh that sounds really cool for a 20-something no, to do. That's weird. It is weird, you're right. And that Just like is you. my tripod rolling around in the back. Again. Yes, it is. Just well, like you. That's because every time you put your foot down in this, it just goes... <laughs> 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 I, thought, I thought we said the outro already. We have. They've gone now. They're e eating their dinner. In fact, half of them have probably gone to bed. What? How do you... Well, what? well, if you haven't and you've stayed till the end, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Until next time, please join the activity. Bye-bye. What the heck?